the well ordering principle is one of those facts in mathematics that's so obvious that you hardly notice it and the objective of this brief introduction is to call your attention to it um, we've actually used it already and in subsequent segments of this presentation we'll show lots of applications of it so here's a statement of the well ordering principle every non-empty set of non-negative integers has a least element now this is probably familiar maybe you haven't even thought about it but now that I mentioned it I expect it's a familiar idea and it's pretty obvious too if you think about it for a minute here's a way to think about it um, uh, given a non-empty set of integers you could ask is zero the least element in it well if it is then you're done then you could say is one the least element in it and if it is you're done and if it isn't you could say two is is two the least element and so on given that it's not empty eventually you're going to hit the least element so if it wasn't obvious before there's something of a hand-waving proof of it but I want to get you to think about this well ordering principle a little bit because it's not uh, it, there are some technical parts of it that matter so for example suppose I replaced non-negative integers by non-negative rationals and I asked does every set non-empty set of non-negative rationals have a least element well there is a least non-negative rational namely zero but not every non-negative set of rationals has a least element I'll let you think of an example uh, another variant is when instead of talking about the non-negative integers I just talk about all the integers is there a least integer well no obviously because minus one is not the least and minus two is not the least and there isn't any least integer now, we take for granted the well-ordering principle just all the time if I ask you what was the youngest age of an MIT graduate well you wouldn't for a moment wonder whether there was a youngest age and if I asked you for the smallest number of neurons in any animal you wouldn't wonder whether there was or wasn't a smallest number of neurons we may not know what it is but there's surely a smallest number of neurons because neurons are non-negative integers and finally if I asked you what was the smallest number of US coins that could make a dollar 17 again we don't have to worry about existence because the well ordering principle knocks that off immediately now for the remainder of this talk I'm going to be talking about the non-negative integers always uh, unless I explicitly say otherwise so I'm just going to use the word number to mean non-negative integer there's a standard mathematical symbol that we use to denote the non-negative integers it's uh, that letter n at the top of the slide with a double with a diagonal double bar um, these are sometimes called the natural numbers but I've never been able to understand or figure out whether zero is natural or not so we don't use that phrase we zero is included in n the non-negative integers and that's what we call them in this class now I want to point out that we've actually used the well ordering principle already without maybe not noticing it even in the proof that the square root of two was not rational that proof began by saying suppose the square root of 2 was rational that is it was a quotient of integers m over n and the remark was that you can always express a fraction like that in lowest terms more precisely you can always find positive numbers m and n without common factors such that the square root of 2 equals m over n if there's any fraction equal to the square root of 2 uh, then there's a lowest terms fraction m over n with no common factors so now we can use well ordering to come up with a simple and uh, and uh, hopefully very clear and convincing argument for why uh, every fraction can be expressed in lowest terms in particular let's look at numbers m and n such that the square root of 2 is equal to m, and m over n that fraction and let's just choose the smallest numerator that works Try, find the smallest numerator m such that square root of 2 is equal to m over n well I claim that that fraction which uses the smallest possible numerator has got to be in lowest terms because suppose that m and n had a common factor c that was greater than 1 a real common factor then you could replace m over n by m over c the numerator is a smaller 
numerator that's still an integer, and n over c, the denominator is still an integer, and we have a numerator that's smaller than m contradicting the way that we chose m in the first place. And this contradiction, of course, implies that m and n have no common factors, and therefore, as claimed, m over n is in lowest terms. And of course, the way I formulated this was for our application of the fraction that was equal to the square root of 2, but this proof actually shows that any rational number, any fraction, can be expressed in lowest terms.